brief introduction to topological spaces. My name is Lori Zigolmeyer, and I'm a professor at McAllister College. I thought I'd begin with a brief overview of some of the central mathematicians working in the area of topology. So, of course, there are many mathematicians I could have included in this list, but I've uh, chosen the following three. So, Lipstein was actually the first to use the term topology in his native German uh, to distinguish between uh, the more qualitative geometry he was interested in than the more quantitative geometry of the past. Now, there were various mathematicians uh, working in this area uh, throughout this time, such as Mobius and Klein and Riemann. Um, and then later, uh, Poincaré actually took a lot of these ideas and really formalized them. In particular, he uh, formalized notions like connectivity and developed uh, ideas uh, like homology and homotopy, which really are uh, central to the field of algebraic topology. And then Alsdorf uh, further uh, um, took these ideas earlier mathematicians were uh, thinking about and really axiomatized them. In particular, he was the first uh, to uh, coin the term of a topological space. So what is a topological space? I like to think of it in terms of the following question. So given a bunch of points, how can we define a collection of sets that somehow resemble spaces like um, the more familiar real line or Euclidean space that was familiar to these mathematicians of the time. And they, these uh, mathematicians really wanted to focus on doing so without a notion of distance um, uh, because they wanted to focus on more uh, qualitative properties. So the idea is imagine we have an open set uh, contained inside of the reals. How can we define a uh, more uh, general uh, space uh, that has a lot of the behaviors of these open sets contained inside of the reals. So this leads us to the notion of a topology and a topological space. So imagine we're given a set and um, these are our points. And we're given a collection tau, which are our sets. So is a topology if it satisfies these uh, four properties um, that follow. Now, uh, we want to think of these in terms of the open sets and the reals. So often we call these the open sets, but we'll see some examples later on that they may not look and feel like the open sets we're used to in the reals. Now, the four properties are that uh, in this collection, we must include the empty set. We must include the whole set. And if um, we have a bunch of open sets, we can take arbitrary unions of these open sets. So they can possibly be infinite. And we should still have an open set. So a collection of these open sets in tau must also still be in tau. Finite intersections must also be in tau. And if you recall, um, uh, properties of the open sets in the reals, they actually do satisfy these uh, four properties. So the topological space then is simply our points together with these sets. And uh, this is where we get uh, the area of mathematics known as point set topology. So if we have this ordered pair, then this um, uh, defines a topological space. Now, I'm going to give an overview of a few different uh, topological spaces, primarily focusing on uh, the real numbers. Okay, so if we think of the reals, um, uh, uh, we can think of the standard topology on the reals. Okay, and what we can do is we can form the topology as the collection of these open sets such that A and B are in the reals, and all um, uh, unions and finite intersections, okay? So if the goal of topology was to uh, define more general spaces um, in terms of the real numbers, then uh, this better be a topological space itself, okay? 
So um, uh, what I've done here is uh, created a collection of elements here uh, in terms of the open sets. And this would actually be what we would call a basis of the topology, where we can take these elements and then throw on all possible unions and finite intersections, and it's going to generate all of the different um, uh, open sets that we could potentially have in our space. Now, a notable question you might ask is, can a topology on a space have no open sets? Well, of course not, because one of the uh, central things in uh, topology is that it must have the empty set and it must have the whole set. So no, it must contain both the empty set and the whole set. So this sort of leads us to what is the notion of a smallest topology you can have? The smallest topology on any X is just going to be the empty set and the whole set, okay? Now, imagine I gave you the space of um, a singleton element, okay? So here we have a singleton element. What is the, the, a topology that you can put on this? It turns out that there's only one, and the only one topology is this sort of smallest space, the whole space and the empty set. Similarly, if I gave you that um, our set of points is just the empty set, then there's only one topology we could put on this, and that is the empty set. Okay. So both of these um, uh, are sort of these smallest topologies, and this is something that we call the indiscrete topology. So this is the indiscrete or the trivial topology. Now, another question you might ask is, can a set X admit more than one topology? And hopefully you see, yes, of course. So if our set X was the real numbers, we see here's one topology, the standard topology determined in, in um, the form of these uh, open sets, or we could have, say, the indiscrete or trivial topology on it. So uh, we could have, say, tau equals this, where we have uh, the empty set and all of R, and those are the only things we declare are open, or we could have these A, B, the open intervals in here, and unions and intersections, okay? So um, this tells us that even though we have the same underlying points, we could have different topologies, creating different topological spaces. So the question we could ask is, what if we let every subset of a space X be open. Does this make a topology? And if you think of this, every subset of the space X, this would be the power set, and sometimes we use this notation. Now, would this satisfy the properties of a topology? Well, certainly the empty set and the whole set are in the power set. Any arbitrary unions are going to be in the power set, and any finite intersections are going to be in the power set. So yes, this does in fact um, create a topology on any set X. Yes, this is what we would call the discrete topology. Okay, and I have these formal definitions down here. We sort of have the indiscrete topology, which I like to think of as the smallest topology you could have on an A set, and the discrete topology, which we can think of as the largest topology on um, uh, any uh, collection of points. Okay. Now, um, what this tells us is that um, uh, the indiscrete topology we can think of as being different from the discrete topology which is also different from the standard topology. All of these have different notions of open uh, in their space. For instance, the discrete topology has things like the open set five, or it could include the uh, interval zero one, or it could include things like high 
to uh, seven with um, uh, half open intervals here. All of those in the discrete topology are uh, considered open, but these are not open, are not open in say our standard. And then our standard has open intervals, our traditional open intervals, um, our standard has open sets like say one to two, which are not open in the industry topology. It tells us that there's lots of different topologies that we could uh, have on any given um, set of points. Here are some other open sets um, uh, or different notions of topological spaces we could define just on the single set of um, uh, points of the reals. The so one is the lower limit topology. It turns out if you take any element like a uh, one to two, half open interval like this, and you say these are going to uh, be um, uh, defined to be open. We can throw in all possible unions and finer, finite intersections. Uh, so elements like this uh, would actually uh, form a basis for our topology. It turns out that this will actually satisfy those four properties uh, that I listed above. Go check it out for yourself. Another interesting topology on the reals is the finite complement topology, where we can take the real line and imagine we exclude a finite number of points. Now, sets like this or um, uh, uh, the empty set are defined to be our open sets in uh, the finite complement topology. Again, it satisfies those four properties from above. And then the last topology I'll introduce is uh, the K topology. And uh, these, we have open sets, which are just our standard open intervals, or open sets excluding uh, some elements, which we'll call K. Um, so think of this as uh, the set minus. And the elements K are the uh, one over N, where N is a positive number. So if we had just some uh, standard interval and imagine this is zero in our interval, we're going to exclude all of these points along here. Okay, so those are what's defined to be open. So hopefully you see that um, all of these satisfy the properties of um, a, a topological space. Uh, and in particular a topology, but they look and feel very different. So these open sets may not be our traditional notion of open, but they still satisfy the same property. So the key takeaway is that a topology actually defines the open set in a space. And once we have this definition, we can get a topological space. And then we can study all sorts of interesting properties. In particular, and some of the topologies I've introduced today, they are connected. Some of them are disconnected. Some of them are compact. Some of them are not compact. So I'll leave it to you to figure out um, uh, which are which. Thank you.